Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 1st, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a quick post today by Xavier about RPMSG files or restricted permission messages. These are essentially email messages with digital rights management. So the sender can restrict what you're doing with this message. And uh, well, it's sort of part of uh, the Microsoft messaging ecosystem. So in order to send the message, you have to have an Outlook account and also the recipient typically needs to use Outlook in order uh, to see the message. At least within Outlook, the messages are opened automatically. The reason uh, these are used maliciously is phishing. Uh, remember yesterday I talked about how Microsoft is reporting about phishing campaigns where the sender is joining your Azure Active Directory uh, domain. Well, uh, this uh, could be then used uh, with these RPMSG emails in order to appear more legitimate and also to possibly bypass certain security tools. And yesterday I mentioned how QNAP got some heat for automatically updating certain QNAP devices. Well, uh, today QNAP did a press release clarifying some of this in order to be actually automatically updated. You have to enable the auto update feature. Auto update will also not apply all updates. It will apply what QNAP calls the recommended version. So if there's just a simple feature update or so, it will not be applied. They restrict that to significant updates of their operating system. And what happened in this particular case is that the particular version of the uh, QNAP operating system uh, was released a few weeks ago, but on January 27th, QNAP set it as the recommended version in order uh, to counter uh, this most recent attack of ransomware against the older versions of the uh, QTS uh, operating system. And talking about network storage devices, we do have a new vulnerability in Samba, the SMB implementations used by many Unix systems, in particular by a lot of uh, these network storage devices. Now, uh, this particular uh, vulnerability does allow arbitrary code execution as uh, the root user. However, in order to exploit this, an attacker has to be able uh, to access the file's extended attributes. This could potentially be an unauthenticated user. It does depend on how your system is configured. So definitely something to watch out for. All your major Linux distributions are affected and with that also many of these network storage devices. And remember how a week or so ago, Jan wrote about these exposed integrated lights out uh, interfaces that are exposed to the internet. Well, uh, these interfaces give you access to individual servers, but there are also similar systems that allow access to data centers, usually referred to as data center infrastructure management or DKIM. And these interfaces typically allow access to, for example, uh, the AC systems and things like that in the data center. So actually making sure that the lights are out if you're using your integrated lights out adapter. While this typically doesn't allow access uh, to the servers uh, directly as in sort of firmware updates and the like, uh, like uh, the ILO system, it still allows at least for a denial of service attack. If an attacker would, for example, be able to change the temperature in the data center or also disable certain alarms that are being sent by the software in order to alert an operator of, for example, a malfunctioning power supply or, for example, a malfunctioning air conditioner. And the expat project uh, published a new version fixing uh, two security issues. Both are integer overflows, so they can lead uh, to code execution. This is 
yet again one of those sort of supply chain issues. Xpad is one of the most commonly used XML parsers. So if you're dealing with XML, there is a good chance that Xpad is involved with it somehow. So uh, please update it uh, as patches become available. And from what I can tell so far, most Linux distributions do have updated packages available. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.